Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. And we are moving on to the third case, guys, Infamy. And this seems to have an even darker tone than the previous two cases we've been on. What, that church looks... Got, got some Carefix Abbey from Dracula vibes here. So, let's see what's going on. Father, Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, you know, the star of American theatre, and he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. Ouch. Let's propose another solution, because Alice knows... Katie's background here. Why don't you stay with Mrs. Hudson? Oh, but Miss Caitlin has more in common with Miss Alice, and they get along so well. Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. Oi. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will. Brains. So this must be Oscar Wilde, essentially. Let us uh, see what we got here. That is a fashionable mustache, sir, I must say. American Pride wants to attract attention. Looks like American Pride is... What is needed here? Pocket mirror, self-affected, actor's tool. And he looks pretty... charismatic. I'm not seeing anything on his face. What? Wait a minute. Follows fashion trends. American pride. Hmm. Cool. Holmes's preferred brand of tobacco. And personalized boots. So we gotta call this guy Orson, not Oscar. Orson Wilde, not yet 30 years of age, is a star of American theater who came to London to study the role of Sherlock Holmes. It is probable he began his study previously. He smokes the same brand of tobacco as Holmes. Orson is narcissistic and follows fashion. He admires his own reflection, and the brooch pinned to his breast displays his American pride, which is probably very annoying to um, all the Englishmen here. Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming. Huh. This is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> Hoy. Yeah, that's not annoying at all. Find out more information about Orson Wilde. And I see a bomb here. So that is not good. Find out more information. Well... We could go ahead and talk to Mrs. Hudson. I have an idea that we might find something here in the newspapers. But... Is Toby here? There, I see you under the table. Who's a good dog? Oh, come on, Toby. Your soap bath couldn't have been as bad as that. Maybe he's reacting to Orson. Hmm. Oh! Okay. Mr. Holmes, my name is Tabitha Falk. I am one of the nurses who attends the inmates at Westgate Prison. I took care of Mr. Albiot, who asked me to write, you, write to you after his death. He remained furious right up to the end and refused to ask God for forgiveness. He blamed you, Mr. Holmes, for breaking his will. It was so sad to see. With respect, Tabitha Falk. What's this one? Mr. Holmes, it's Dr. Reuben Fisher. Do you remember me? 
Well, you are a sorry excuse for a detective. You failed to understand why any of it was done. We chose the lesser evil for a greater, brighter future. We needed to sacrifice the few to help the majority. You'll remember these words one day. Sincerely, Dr. Reuben Fisher. Oh, that was Dr. Marsh's uh, guy that we never saw again. So that's what that is. It's kind of like a little trophy thing. Well, hopefully we made the right call with Albiet, but... It would be better to examine Wilde's belongings before he returns. Oh. We're just getting right into the uh, super sneaky, aren't we? We're not necessarily super. Ah, our star in the role of Hamlet. He played Hamlet? Really? And it looks like uh, Katie's pictures have been replaced with posters of him. I don't know. Honestly, the level of narcissism. Did he set those up? While Trudy has a perfect disguise kit, do actors really need all this? Maybe. I use the same brushes for makeup. There's, I think Holmes is upset because there's a lot of similarities here, at least in some respect. This must be grease paint. Good old grease paint. Pancake makeup? Oh, face powder of an excellent quality. Hopefully that's just face powder. I forgot my hat. Father? I'm just checking, um... You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it sure. Might be. Uh, practicing my disguises. You know me. <sighs> Nothing gets by her. No, don't, don't touch that! No, no. Well, Orson's making himself at home. Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Heels in a hurry. Ooh. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Windebank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Windebank. That's uh, from one of the old Holmes video games I used to play. Let's do a uh, analysis. You wear glasses. I know because I have the exact same thing. Uh, ex expensive brooch. She's not flashy at all. She is rich, though. What else do we have here? Engaged? She wouldn't wear that on that hand otherwise. At least not in Victorian times. Didn't notice boots. Mary Sutherland is a good-tempered young lady of 25 years of age. She has poor eyesight. She has failed to know she is wearing mismatched boots. Mary is a wealthy young lady, and she is engaged to be married. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes. Although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. You notice how Orson was trying to um, imitate Holmes's mannerisms? What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? See? I met him at the Gasfitters Ball. Mr. Windebank did not wish for me and mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together. Capture Pokemon. Father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against it then? Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. 
He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Oi. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, Father was going off again in a week. And Hosma wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until Father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. That's actually a good question by Orson. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Hmm. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha, a love letter. Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. Slap him. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her. <laughs> Find out more information about Orson Wilde completed. Yep. Can we actually go into this door now? Because there was some stuff that we didn't look at earlier. Oh, it was probably just his clothes then. Alright. We hit what we needed to. Well, not really. We haven't hit Orson yet. I know, buddy. Oh, come on, Toby. Your soap bath couldn't have been as bad as that. So we got some deductions right off the bat. Mary's income... That wasn't going to lead anything, but the dents with the different boots indicates that she is nearsighted. So that's something. And those two don't add up. But we started to get clues, so that's stellar. Resolve Mary Sutherland's case. Thanks to Wild, my analysis table has been completely destroyed. Awesome. So, no analyses at the moment. Probably not until much later. A map of London and its surroundings. Could be useful. Okay, Orson? A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? Yeah, weren't you going to, like, hand it over? You grabbed it out of my hand. Mr. Holmes, what do you think about the letter on the table? Do you think it might help? Oh. Public notice, a disappearance. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Hosmer Angel has mysteriously vanished. Mr. Angel is around 5 feet 7 inches in height, of strong build with a sallow complexion. He's black-haired with bushy side whiskers and a mustache. He is likely to be wearing tinted spectacles. On last sighting, Mr. Angel was dressed in a black silk frock coat with a black waistcoat and gray Harris tweed trousers. He is known to have been employed in an office on Leadenhall Street. If you are in possession of any information, please come forward. There will be a reward for any help given in finding this gentleman. I bet that costume is going to uh, come in handy, I would imagine. My dear love, please don't worry of your sweet head. Do you believe that I would say nothing, anything to your family who's understanding, who understand nothing of love? We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Such a short time, but it was enough for me to know that you are my life. I want to spend every minute from now on with you. I wish that it were possible. I love you very much, and I am waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more upon his travels, so we can meet again. Hosmer Angel. Okay, I am calling my shot right now. I believe that Hosmer Angel and her stepfather are the exact same person. When he leaves for France, he is able to uh, maybe disguise himself because they're around the same age. Remember, that's very important. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of perverse, but I sounds sounds like the kind of twist that this story would have. 
So I think Hosmer and the stepfather are the same person. Oops. No, I don't want to skip that. This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. No, that's not type. That's not strange at all, actually. Good quality paper, quite smooth. Fairly common ink, nothing special. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Come on, Holmes. You know. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. Let's study this letter more closely. Maybe because it is the exact, uh... Hello? There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. Probably the exact same thing, huh? Dear Mary, I'm taking the opportunity of sending you these few lines in the hope that they will find you and your mother in good health. France is a nice country to look at, but it is the same as anywhere. There are rogues here who deceive and mistreat their women. Men nowadays are so dishonorable, they won't think twice to break your heart. I hope that you will be an obedient girl and look after your mother, and that you will take my advice and stay at home. I'll be back before long, your father. The stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Mm, I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm, take my advice, stay at home. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. This is interesting. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Mm -hmm. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. So we've got the M's. This letter has a defect. One more letter with a defect. We gotta see which ones are similar. Ah, and it's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the K. Like so. What else do we have here? Another K, another M. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. I think my assumption was correct. Your father. And they'll both have the same punctuation at the end, which is kind of weird. Was there any other little smudges? Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. Indeed. So. Hosmer's letter. We're just going to go down here. We, we, we know what's going on, especially with the bad eyesight situation. Work travels in secretive character. Oh, doing all the things. All right. The family have an interest in Mary remaining single as to have access to her inheritance. Hmm. Mary and her stepfather trusted one another. Mary was told to remain at home as her stepfather believed it would be better for her. Now, one of the reasons that the stepfather might be doing this kind of relationship with Mary is he would get the money. So, let's go ahead and leave that there. Profit. The letters... Yeah, that, that's not a coincidence. Single typewriter. Along with the bad eyesight. Mary had the opportunity to socialize without her stepfather's knowledge. For some reason, Hosmer Angel met with Mary only when her stepfather was away on business trips. Mary's stepfather was unaware of her relationship with Hosmer Angel. Nope. That... 
Bam. Mary's stepfather lied. He didn't take his business trip as he found out that Mary was disobeying him. Mary's stepfather took his business trip, which gave Mary the opportunity to secretly meet with Hosmer Angel. These are a little bit different. Mr. Windebank is Mr. Angel. Einhorn is Finkel. <laughs> Finkel is Einhorn. Hmm. Mary's stepfather, Mr. Windebank, adopted a disguise and played the role of Mr. Hosmer Angel to keep his stepdaughter and her money close to home. Oh, man. Well, here's what we could do, guys. We can hide the truth. It'll cause Mary a great deal of distress if she has told the true identity of Hosmer Angel and tell the truth. She doesn't deserve to be deceived in such a fashion because it is her money. And anyone who would do this, go back and forth between the same person, like, they, they need to be told because that's, that's some uh, Lannister-style shenanigans there. So let's confirm the moral choice. You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about... But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes? You could have been more diplomatic. That's not the Holmes way. The deduction space icon indicates that some of your clues can form an important deduction and improve your progress in the investigation. And looks like we are still going on. So, of course, we saw that bomb from earlier. So we are not done yet. What were you supposed to do, though, you know? Meanwhile... There's the homes I remember. What is going on? Oh, dear. Go back to your flat and stay there with Kate. Is that a bomb? Calm down, Toby. Now, let's see what this contains. Yep, there's the ticking. It's ticking. Yep, that's not good. Right on Toby's mat. Uh, select action. I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. Okay. Bend aside. Move away. Oh, I want. Oh, whoops. Move away, as in actually move away from the cylinder. <laughs> My bad. It's ticking. Uh huh. Sorry, I interpreted that wrong. I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. So we will bend aside. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. A fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. I have two minutes to defuse it. Alright, um... There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. A source of electricity for the detonation. Alrighty. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode. Okay. A package with explosive material. There are wires going in and out. 
It's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside. Hmm. So, what to do? There's the solenoid. And... Man, don't know what to do here. I always cut the blue wire in these cases. Is that a bad thing? Why not? Oh! No, I wanted to... Uh, hold on. It's the clock. There's the... Sure, why not? Boop! <laughs> well then. A fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. I have two minutes to defuse it. So, that goes into there. We got this red wire going in. That blue wire going in like so. Red wire like that. And then... Let's try... I'm horrible at this, guys, so just letting you, letting you know. We'll probably just do this process of elimination. As we are wont to do. It doesn't look like we can cut... Oh, wait, there it is. Sure. Whew. Holy crap. So we know to cut that one. Um, blue wire coming in through this way. Is this the one to lead to the solenoid? I think we have to do these in order. So those ones can't be cut yet. And that one leads over there? What? Hmm. So far, so good. Uh-huh. Are things being done that are good? I hope so. Those are still there. Let's go ahead and try one connected to the clock. That one's already cut. That one's already cut. I think so, yeah? Oh. Did we do it? Hallelujah! What happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? <sighs> Mr. Holmes! Are you all right? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five five with black hair and a hair lip. No. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Very good. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. Now, that probably is, seems cheap, but um, a penny was pretty good for street kids back in the day. But we definitely got some attention, and we are going to go ahead and end the episode here, and we'll check the jacket here next time. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.